so now the next natural resource which we are going to discuss is water so water is another important natural resource in your lower classes you studied about water pollution and how the human interventions causes the disturbance in the water that is the natural resource so here we are going to discuss about few points first let us look at what are the major concerns major issues linked up with water that is by the human intervention that is by the human activities the first thing is the water cycle is disturbed disturbed disturbance takes place in the water cycle what is this disturbance actually the water cycle it happens naturally it is a natural phenomenon it takes place in a regular way but because of the human activities like excess use of fuels excess production of carbon dioxide increasing the temperature of the earth that is global warming and all these leads to different phenomena like el nino la nina effects so by that the monsoon winds are affected and it affects the rainfall so the water cycle is disturbed and one more aspect is that deforestation cutting down the forest forests are the lungs of the earth the amount of the forest is decreased the amount of the trees are decreased so by that the transpiration rate is less so less clouds are formed so naturally less rainfall so the water cycle is disturbed here and the second one is water pollution already we discussed about this water pollution so release of toxic chemicals unwanted materials and all these things into the water bodies leads to contamination of water pollution of water so by that it affects the lives of the people those who are connected who those who drink the water those who use the water for other purposes so in this way it affects our hum life human life and what is the other aspect here what is the other issue here water crisis even though the government plans to construct very big dams even though we have very big dams to store the water in the reservoirs and release in the times when it is needed for irrigation there is a lot of scarcity for water people are fighting different state governments are fighting for water so what is this condition and why this kind of situations were not there in the past history if we go back to the dates of kings and kingdoms then we can see that there was no problem there was no crisis of course they were only dependent on the rain water but they have so many measures and methods to harvest the rain water so once there is a rain the people used to follow different methods to store the water in the ground they have ponds and lakes and wells which are well maintained so when they are properly maintained the rain water is harvested the rain water is captured into the ground it is stored underground and it is used from the wells whenever it is needed but later what happened so later the new technologies have come the new methods have come the british has brought the approaches like building big dams so people totally forgot about their local maintenance of the local water bodies so people thought that it is the duty of government government build the dams and it will supply the water so supply of water is the duty of government people totally forgot about their maintenance local bodies the local water body maintenance it was totally forgotten so now it is the big issue what is that water crisis so totally all the agriculture irrigation which is far away from the rivers and canals the people are dependent on the ground water they are growing the crops which takes a lot of water even when they are not connected to any canal or river then how they are getting the water they are drawing the water from the ground by putting bore wells which suck the water with the help of pumps so these bore wells are dug 10 meters 20 meters 30 meters 100 meters so this much of depth they are going 1000 uh, feet even sometimes they are going to 1000 feet to draw the water so in this way the water is drawn out of the earth the ground water of course we can take the ground water and we can use it but the thing is we should see that it is recharged again the water should reach the ground that means we should have some measures 
by which the rain water is seeped down, sink down into the ground. So the ground water must be recharged always. So if you are not taking any steps to recharge the ground water, simply you wanted to use ground water, what happens at one day, it will become extinct. So you won't find any water even though you go for uh, more than 1000 feet down, there is no use. So that is what happening in many places, even though they drill lot and lot of depth with the machines, they are not able to find even a drop of water. Because they over exploited the ground water over exploitation, over usage of ground water without any idea of recharging. So that is the water crisis. So in this lesson, in this section, we are going to talk about water management methods. The people, the villagers or the governments, they can follow certain methods to restore or to harvest the rainwater. Of course, the dams, they store the water in a large quantity and not only to supply in time of uh, agriculture, the idea is to store the water so by that it get seeped down into the ground. So recharge of the ground water and the water can be regulated and supplied and even it may be used for hydroelectricity production. So in this way with all these ideas the dams were built, constructed. Apart from these huge dams, there are many other methods. There can be many, uh, many other small constructions by which water can be harvested, by which water can be stored, by which we can prevent the wastage of water. What is the wastage of water? So when there is rainfall at one particular place, the water it flows, the water it flows downstream, you call it as runoff. So this runoff, it leads till where? Till it gets mixed in the ocean. So the water it flows into the ocean. So you can make certain constructions, dams or bunds or something there in between. So by that at every stage you can stop the flow of water. You can preserve the water, you can store the water for some extent and you can slowly release the water when it is needed and you can supply the water. You can channelize the water to different areas, different crops. So by that the water can be properly utilized by these constructions. Let us see some of the constructions that are done in different areas of our country and how they are useful. So before we see the various harvesting methods, let us see the different reasons for water crisis. First thing is loss of visitation cover. Loss of visitation cover. Visitation cover helps water to recharge. So the groundwater is recharged by vegetation cover. If the land is covered by grass, so by that the roots of the grass, they hold much soil and the soil can hold much water. So the water holding capacity is more, so by that the water is reaching the ground and the level of underground water increases. So loss of vegetation is one reason for water crisis. The second one is diversion of water for water demand demanding crops. Let us take rice, sugar cane. So these are the crops that need lot of water to grow. So in some places the water is diverted to the, the crops which take a lot of water. So in that cases the other people, the other places may not get proper, no equitable distribution of water. And third one is pollution releasing effluents, wastes into the water also one of the problem for the water crisis. Now let us see, so these are the various reasons. And as I told you before, the local water management was not there. People are totally forgot the local management of their local wa water bodies. Recently we see in the state Telangana, so there is a program called as Mission Kakatiya. If we see that in the state of Telangana, so the government has taken the initiation of repairing the water bodies, tanks in the villages. So by that they can harvest the water. So you see these kind of activities were done during the period of kings and in their kingdoms they have taken every step, every measure to maintain these tanks, wells and other ponds, lakes, all the water bodies are well maintained. So by that they can harvest the natural water that is the rain water. But that is after the entry of the British, the scenario changed as I have explained uh, earlier. So they started constructing big dams, the people 
they have come to a conclusion that okay maintenance of water bodies is not our duty and that is the duty of the government so the government has taken the responsibility of building big dams and providing the water so channelizing the water water supply through irrigation canals and all this has come so people totally neglected the local water bodies so it led to water crisis now let us see dams okay the british or the present government or the independent india the government has built up so many dams but now let us see whether these dams have solved this problem or not they have constructed so many dams but still there is a problem for water why what are the issues that are linked up with these dams one major thing is no equitable distribution of water a dam is constructed at one place so the water is channelized to which areas these channels reach that crops and that farmers will be happy they will get the water but there are some places which are far away from this dam far away from the canals they do not get any water so no equitable distribution the water is not properly rationally distributed that is not possible here so some people get so many benefits some people gets problem they don't get sufficient amount of water so the government takes they tells it gives reasons okay you are in far away place and your place we cannot the water can be supplied you are at some height higher place higher than the level of the water flow so you need to have uh, some kind of lift irrigation to supply it costs crores of rupees so the government cannot supply provide water to certain areas because they are in higher level so in this way there are so many problems linked up which causes the unequal distribution of water so that is what happened in indira gandhi canal in rajasthan so here the dam it can bring granary to certain parts of rajasthan but whereas in other places some places there is no proper distribution of water so this is what happens and one more issue linked up with the construction of the dams is that evacuation of the area many people are living in that particular area are evacuated because to construct the uh, dam they need very large area so in this case they have to evacuate certain villages now present at present we can see the issue with polavaram in andhra pradesh state so they are going to construct a polavaram dam so for this polavaram dam they are going to evacuate certain villages so what happens to these villages they will be given some promises that if they give their land houses their village if they leave their village so we will be providing you housing we will be providing you this and that and this the government make promises but how far these promises are fulfilled that is the another social issue linked up with and how far it is good in some cases while constructing the dams or reservoirs this kind of a projects then they'll be evacuating at the same time they'll be removing certain forest area the forest area also will be submerged by water so it leads to loss of diversity many animals become extinct or they may disappear from that area so that is all happens because of this so so many issues are linked up with this that is construction of big dams huge project so here we have to think that will this bring a permanent solution will it be a permanent solution will these dams and projects supply water to each and everybody will they cater the needs of each and every farmer will they cater the needs of domestic needs of water in each and every household that has to be discussed here so now let us see that once again just have a look at the problems that are caused by the dams one is social social problem as we have discussed that it affects the lives of so many people those who are living in the vicinity of that particular area where the government plan to construct a dam those people are evacuated so by that the government make promises but it is not sure whether they get all the benefits and not only in terms of money leaving their home leaving their motherland and going to some other place is a very pathetic condition and many people may not be able to digest it so these are the social issues and second thing is economic so what is the economic aspect of this here to construct a dam thousands of crores thousands of crores of money 
of money is invested here so from where does this money come okay government spends it from where does the government gets it is the money of people the people of a country pay the taxes which is collected by the government which is used for different purposes like this but here once a huge amount of money is invested in building a dam how far this dam guarantees the up upliftment of living standards of the people so it is a questionable area because we have seen what are the various problems associated with these dams a dam may fail because it may not be able to properly provide the water to all the people it may not be able to equally distribute the water to all the people so justice is not done to all the people but all the people money is invested here so the people contributed for this dam which is useful only for a, a sector a few people not for everybody and one more issue that it goes in countries in our country we are seeing the other thing corruption where there is a lot of money then there is a word called corruption so when there is an investment of thousands of crores of rupees there will be a kind of lobbying every contractor every person every official and uh, the people those who are associated in that political parties political people everybody wanted to get benefit out of that the huge project so the corruption people's money is wasted so this is the these are the economic aspects of the construction of dams so social problems we have seen third one is so social economic and third one is about environmental what is this environmental how the environment is affected loss of biodiversity forest area is cleared up and sometimes they may remove certain hills and uh, uh, certain areas also they level up certain hills and they clear the forest so all this leads to loss of biodiversity loss of bio diversity so that is the reason you see that whenever there is a the government announces that it construct is going to construct a big project there there will be some opposition agitations from different groups of people tribals they say that we don't want to lose our land and students they agitate okay do not disturb this uh, natural areas and do not evacuate the villages and many people question that how far this dam is going to help the people and how far the benefits will uh, help the people for the upliftment of the community and uh, what sector of people are going to um, benefit from this dam and there are so many people who don't have any benefit out of this even though the public money their money which is paid in the form of taxes is invested here so now let us see the traditional water harvesting method watershed management is a very important aspect and which helps to conserve the fertility of the soil as well as to restore the water to recharge the ground so here the soil fertility is maintained soil erosion is prevented second thing is the water is stored in the ground so the ground underground water recharge also takes place so these two things that is preserving the fertility of the soil and recharge of the ground water these two things they contribute to the increase in biomass production biomass production what is this biomass biomass is nothing but the amount of plant matter or animal matter living matter on the area if a ground is left barren and all the soil is allowed to erode no water is um, recharged down in such barren land you cannot find even a single grass so there is no biomass you take some 10 meters of such area in the 10 meters there is no grass no biomass but if the soil is properly managed with the help of local watershed management methods the soil fertility is maintained as well as the water content of the soil is also maintained so it leads to increase in the biomass production more biomass is produced so this is a very ancient system as i told you before during the time of kings and kingdoms they used to focus on the local water bodies watershed management underground water that is the dug wells as well as the tanks and ponds allowed more vegetation so by that that more recharge of ground water so in different places in our country we see different kind of methods traditional 
water harvesting methods in which we see this is a traditional water harvesting methods by using this uh, khadins 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 or bunds here these khadins are called as bunds and these are called with different different names in different states but the purpose is same this is to make some bund by making this bund allowing the water to stagnate here so this stagnated water it seeps down into the ground seepage so this is a kadin it may be constructed with the help of brick stones and mud usually in the crescent shape like this so it will stop the flow of water so this is the catchment area from here the water goes down so when it is going down it is stopped at this place the water is stored here for some time so by that it recharges seepage takes place so once here the ground water is recharged you get water in the dug wells shallow dug well from the dug well you can collect the water so this kind of this is an example how the traditional water management uh, methods work but even now this is the time for the governments and for the people to think for local harvesting methods they should repair and develop their local water bodies that is what we see in that i already told you in the state telangana they started mission kakatiya so in this they repair the old tanks and wells and other water bodies local water bodies so that is by the involvement of the local people so by that they can harvest more rain water for better irrigation or at least for um, drinking water purposes and other so they can improve their ground water levels so now let us look at the another natural resource that is what we are going to discuss here is that coal and petroleum so coal and petroleum is an important natural resource here coal and petroleum are useful in two ways one is as a fuel source of energy they are the major source of energy for the transportation vehicles run by petrol and diesel which are obtained from petroleum coal is used to produce electricity in the thermal power stations so these are the fuels that means source of energy second thing is raw materials these are the raw materials for synthetic synthetic objects or things what does it mean synthetic plastic so we see so many synthetic materials even cloths even packing material even utensils everything is made out of plastic and uh, it's a synthetic composites so it is a source of carbon compounds which have a special characteristic that is non degradable so that character made the plastic is a good material for various purposes in food in healthcare everywhere the plastics are used these are all derived from coal so these fossil fuels the coal and petroleum they are available in the earth's crust but how far they'll be available like that okay they are available we are extracting them we are using them we are making so many products out of that and we are using all these products for our comfort but here due to the increase in population increasing demand for all these products lots and lot of coal and petroleum are extracted and they are used like that but definitely on one day they will be exhausted so what would be the condition what do we do that we give for the future generations so that is the reason why this natural resource it has to be used judiciously earlier the usage of these materials was less limited uh, limited less but when this industrial revolution started in the industrial revolution the major invention was steam engine engines were invented the engines are connected to the factories the factories are mechanized everything goes in machines that means some machine will run automatically by using some fuel like coal steam so it started using machines everywhere for transport for production of goods for transport of goods for everything so thereby the usage of this coal and petroleum increased a lot so here the problem is not only the exhaustion of these resources the another problem is when these resources are burnt to get energy when petrol is burned diesel is burned other materials are burned they release so many poisonous gases as these are carbon compounds which contain carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen sometimes 
these gases are released into the atmosphere the coal may contain sulfur which is released into the atmosphere sulfur oxides react with rain water form acid rains nitrogen react with uh, oxygen and form nitrogen oxides and react with rain water may form acid rains so they may pollute the air they release compounds like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide which is very dangerous carbon monoxide is more harmful compared to carbon dioxide so this carbon monoxide is released in the smoke of vehicles which use petrol and diesel to run so this carbon monoxide it causes so many problems health problems headache nausea vomiting and these kind of problems in the urban people those who travel in traffic for long hours they are exposed to carbon monoxide so their blood cells efficiency decreases in carrying oxygen so by that leads to headache fatigue and uh, so many kind of problems they they go under a stress which can uh, they whose they cannot face the regular life activities they uh, they feel they'll go uh, they'll undergo a lot of stress and pressure so everything happens because of the pollution may leads to so many health problems also so all this happens because of the burning of the fossil fuels burning large amounts of coal in industries releases so many gases sulfur sulfur oxides into the air so that is also a dangerous thing and uh, the release of a uh, huge amount of carbon dioxide leads to global warming global warming greenhouse effect because co2 is a greenhouse gas so in this way the coal and petroleum the resource if it is not used judiciously it leads to all these consequences so here we must understand the importance of judicial use of this resource coal and petroleum as like in water so in this part in this chapter we have seen about the coal and petroleum water and forest so forest water coal and petroleum are the different natural resources which we discussed in this chapter their proper management and judicial use and what are the various social economical environmental issues that are linked up and what is our responsibility and what kind of awareness we must have and what kind of decisions we should take and what kind of options we have to choose for a proper management of these natural resources for a sustainable growth in a eco friendly environment If you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus